I know in order to be great, you have to make great sacrifices as well. And um, and I'm living the life of my dreams right now. This is what I dreamed of, you know, boxing in, in big stadiums, boxing in front of thousands of people. Even the, the moment I started boxing as a 10 year old, I always had a dream of becoming an Olympic champion. And, and that for me was just so strange because women's boxing wasn't even yeah. in the Olympics at the time. But there wasn't a day that went by where I didn't actually dream of winning that Olympic gold. You don't want to be, to be involved in, in too many of those fights. It definitely wasn't a great performance for me on that night, but um, I found a way to win, thankfully, and uh, I think that's what great champions do, even when they're not on their best on the night, they still find a way, and now I, I'm here as the undisputed champion, and um, what a position to be in. The rematch is definitely going to happen at some stage. That's going to be in, inevitable. I, I think I'd love, to, I'd love to have that fight again. Uh, I'd love to beat her a lot more convincingly than, than, than I did, actually. Yeah. Katie, welcome to Born Fighter. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much. I think a lot of people see you as a bit of a closed book outside yeah. of the ring, so it would be nice to kind of dig a little bit into what you're like as a person, kind of where you grew up, how you grew up, yeah. what you do outside of boxing. So. So guess, this will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to take it, take it all the way back, I guess, what was it like growing up in Bray? What, what was kind of your family situation, like brothers and sisters, yeah. etc.? I had two older brothers and one older sister, so I was uh, the baby of the family. I was spoiled growing up uh, just with, with being the youngest in the family, but I had a great childhood. Um, we grew up in a solid house and um, my parents definitely encouraged me and, and supported me all the way through. Um, I, I was always a very, very quiet person, but sport was always a place where I could I suppose express myself and that's where I really came alive where I was on the football pitch or where I was in the ring boxing that's really where I, I came alive. The youngest of your siblings yeah. did that mean you had to you, I know what it's like you've, to, you've got to fight for the last scrap yeah. of food <laughs> yeah. on the plate you've got to stop people stealing your stuff is that did that kind of bring that kind of fighting mentality out in, in you? I don't know I, I we definitely grew up in a boxing household my, my dad was obviously a boxer my mom was also the first female boxing judge in the country as well so I definitely feel like I, I carried on her pioneer pioneer spirit and um, my two older brothers box as well um, so the first time I put on a pair of gloves actually was around six or seven years of age with, with my brothers in the kitchen that's just how, how we all started but they were always very, very good to me, and um, I didn't feel like I was. I had to fight for anything in the house. They always were the most supportive people, and they still are actually. Well, that sibling rivalry. How did those early fights go? How did those yeah. early spars <laughs> in the kitchen go? Well, they used to just go on their knees and just let me punch them. Really, they never. They always felt bad punching their little sister back. So. They're just like uh, standing punch bags for me, for me, really. But I learned so much from my two older brothers, and um, I grew up in the gym with them uh, all the way up. And, um, and yeah, I just learned so much from them. I, I, I'm a world champion right now, but I'm not even the champion in my own household. I can never, <laughs> I can never really land a punch on them. But that's the way it is with your two older brothers, I guess. Were you, were you like a, a well-behaved kid growing up? A lot of kids who kind of are, are very much into sport. Yeah. Um, leave the academic side behind. Yeah. So, you know what it is. Just, if you either you find me on a football field yeah, or you'll yeah. find me in the ring, were you like well behaved or would you sneak off and go and do your own thing? No, I think I was kind of well behaved. I think I'd be afraid to go back home if I, if I wasn't really. My my parents definitely uh, would have put manners on me if, if I wasn't <laughs> um, well behaved. But um, you know, I always tried my best in school as well. My o older brother Peter actually is um, he's uh, very academic. He's he studies physics and stuff and. Um, he was like he was one of the smartest guys in the country. He won um, the Young Scientist Award in Ireland a couple of times as well. So we grew up in, a, in a, an academic household as well as a sporting household. And um, I always tried my best in that area. But obviously, when I when I was in uh, secondary school, sport just kind of took over naturally. And I was in the gym. I was away in competition all the time. So I was mi missing weeks in school, yeah. but I never complained about that. Yeah, yeah. of course not. <laughs> uh, with with that, were you? I guess what outside of the, the kind of the, the boxing mm. now, where do your interests lie? So, obviously the football side of things mm. we'll come back to. Yeah. But is there any kind of other hobbies or interests that, that you do when you just want to switch off from boxing, or can you switch off from boxing? Yeah, I, mean, I think boxing's just always on my mind, really. But when I, I have a couple of weeks off, I live a very, very simple life actually. Um, I just love spending time with my family and my nieces and nephews, and 
I've got like three nieces and five nephews and I'm away in America all the time now training for fights so when I am home I just love spending time with them and just catching up with family and friends really. But I do live a very very simple life and I don't really know what interests I have outside of boxing, <laughs> it's terrible. Um, is it easy to kind of switch off I guess between between fights or is it are you always thinking what's next what's coming? I think I'm, I've always been in, in that mindset, like after each fight, I enjoy the victory for, the, for a couple of nights, but then I am always thinking about the next step and um, I, I think that's just in my nature. I'm, I'm very, very competitive and I, I want to I do uh, be the best in my sport. I want to see what's next in, in, in the next chapter and um, that's just who I am, I guess. That competitive spirit obviously was instilled in you from a very young age with your brothers with you know yeah. with having a successful sporting family yeah. i heard a story that you would you were telling eddie hearn on his on his podcast <laughs> where you had to when you were, when you were growing up you had to pretend to be a boy that's to right. box in yeah. Ireland. yeah when i first started boxing as a, um, a 10 or 11 year old there's no women's boxing at all in the country in, in my country and um, I was training with the guys all year round and I seen them going away to competitions and it was so tough for me because I had, I had no competitions to go to at all. So in the end we used to just put the head gear on, we took my hair in and we used to just pretend I was a boy, I was known as Kay Taylor. And um, when I took the head gear off then after, at the end of each fight there was always uproar. Um, you know, there was really, really uh, just terrible uproar after each fight. But, I was just kind of oblivious to it all. I was just kind of, I was there to fight. I was, I didn't know what the big deal was. I was, I was just, uh, you know, I see myself as another, another boxer, really, just like anybody else. But that's how, um, how it was. There was always a lot of obstacles and a lot of struggles when I did start. But I had my first official fight um, at 15 years of age. It was the first official female fight in the country, and it was a history-making fight. And uh, since then, we just we just didn't stop. It was um, every every single boxing club in the country now is packed with female boxers, which is which is my greatest legacy. I think yeah. I think that's absolutely amazing. That it's just a normal sport now for for girls to get involved in. When you say uproar, what kind of uproar was it? Was it a from your opponents that maybe you'd beaten, <laughs> yeah. or was it more from the kind of older generation or, or someone yes. who, who maybe didn't want to see women's boxing? Just from the officials, I guess, and, and the people involved in the boxing, and I never really seen that part of it. I think it was my parents that were getting all the, the, the backlash from all of that. Um, but they did a great job at, at protecting me from all that. I didn't really know what was going on. I was just there to box. Um, so, yeah, I think they, they got uh, awful backlash over that for years and years, but they never, they never stopped me from going to those competitions. They always seen, they, they, they knew that I, um, I had a talent for the sport. They knew that, that that's where my passion was. And, Nothing was going to stop me to to get him to where I wanted to to be really, and even the the moment I started boxing as a ten year old, I always had a dream of becoming an Olympic champion, and, and that for me was just so strange because women's boxing wasn't even yeah. in the Olympics at the time. But um, I always knew that I was going to be an Olympic champion someday, and, and every single day I woke up dreaming of of, of that um, of that really, and I don't think there wasn't a day that went by where I didn't actually dream of winning that Olympic gold. When you were boxing these boys as a 12-year-old, 13, 14, did a did, did when did they give you like an extra level of respect when you know you, you took the headgear off and they realised oh it's, it's not just Kate, it's not Kieran, it's, it's yeah, Kate. Yeah. So did they give you like an extra level of respect? Did you get any kind of encouraging words of advice from anybody? Yeah, I think I, there's definitely people who, who definitely supported me and encouraged me during that time as well. I, that, I could only really get away with that over the, the first couple of years, but then word got around the country that I was doing that and I couldn't actually pretend to be a boy anymore going to these competitions. Yeah. But there's always a, um, a great people in the boxing clubs who, who definitely supported me, who, who put me on their shows as exhibition fights as well. So I definitely was um, in a great position as well. And um, I'm so grateful for those people who did support me. and. Um, I'm not sure I'd be where I, where I am today without that support from from those people in, in the local boxing clubs around the country. How did it? I guess how did you go from kind of pretending to be a boy in boxing to then having women's boxing mm. be an official sport where now it's normal to see girls mm. kind of turn up at the boxing gym, mm. spar, box. Yeah, I think that was my parents again. They they definitely battled for me during that time. They they uh, were battling with the officials of the boxing association, saying that I needed to fight. And 
Um, it was terrible that the girls weren't officially allowed to fight in the country, but they def definitely battled hard for me and eventually I got my first female fight, as I said, at, at 15 years of age and then I just kind of went on from there and um, and obviously women's boxing was in, in, in the Olympics then and I got a chance to box in front of the Olympic Committee um, in my early 20s and I was told before that fight that this fight was going to determine whether women's boxing wow. is in the Olympics or not. So. It was a huge, huge pressure fight. I was boxing in front of all the Olympic Committee. This was going to um, be a fight where uh, they were going to um, make the decision on whether women's boxing was in the Olympics. So it was, it was huge. And thankfully, they, um, they were all impressed. And and here we are now. The, uh, you know, women's boxing is, is is in the Olympic Games to, to, to stay now. It's, it's there to stay, which is incredible. Do you feel like sometimes you're carrying the weight of the women's boxing scene on your back because you know you you've been instrumental in kind of bringing it forward and bringing it into the pub not only the public eye but into you know the olympics mm. etc so do you feel like there's there's added pressure on you and how do you deal with that um i wouldn't say there's that i i think that it's a great position to be in i'm, I'm very very grateful to be uh, to be in this position but I definitely wouldn't be in this position without the, uh, the women that came before me as well. And the likes of Deirdre Gogarty, who was a, a great hero of mine. I likes of Jane Couch, who did, who did great things for, for women's boxing as well. Christy Martin, all these women who have paved the way for me as well. Um, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without those, without those heroes of the sport as well. Um, but I do feel like it's a great responsibility to have. and. Um, I, I, I'm definitely um, relishing this uh, this challenge, really, and, and, and this opportunity. You did something incredible and unified mm -hmm. all of the belts. Yeah. With that, I mean, I was sat ringside, oh. and it was one of the most intense, yeah. interesting fights I've I've, I've It was walked, a bit know. too exciting, wasn't it? It was a little bit too exciting <laughs> at times, yeah. I'm thinking, just yeah. box, just box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How was was that partly to do with the pressure? Was that partly to do with your opponent? You know the, yeah. the the gravity of the situation. Probably a bit of everything, really. Um, I definitely wanted to, to impress and put on a good show, but at the same time, I do realise that sometimes you have to win, win born, and I just got caught up in a bit of a fight. Uh, a bit uh, of a fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was an absolute war, but um, yeah, I definitely don't want to be to be involved in, in too many of those fights. It definitely wasn't a great performance for me on that night, but um, I found a way to win, thankfully, and uh, I think that's what great champions do, even when they're not on their best on the night, they still find a way, and now I, I'm here as the undisputed champion, and um, what a position to be in. You were training out in America, you fought yeah. at the MSG a number of times. Yeah. Why have you decided to kind of up sticks and, and move? Yeah, well, after the Rio Olympics, um, that year I just had a really terrible year in the sport and um, I wasn't boxing well at all. I, I, knew, that I knew I needed a, a big change and that's when I got in touch with my current coach, Ross might asked him could I come over for a few weeks and thankfully he obliged. I, I, I went over for a few weeks to Connecticut and that's where I decided that I wanted to turn pro as well. And I got in touch with Eddie Hearn and my manager, Brian Peters, and. Um, it was definitely a big move for me, a big sacrifice, because I am a, 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 a huge home bird and I love being around my family and friends, but I knew that that's what I needed to do, really. Um, you know, I wasn't enjoying my boxing at all that year, and the first few weeks I was over with Ross in Connecticut. It was the first time in a long time where I actually started to enjoy my boxing again, yeah. and that to me is absolutely everything. I have to enjoy what I'm, what I'm doing. and. Um, it was a pretty easy decision for me in, in the end. I knew that's where I, I needed to be. What was the main difference, I guess, because you've been fighting as amateur for so long, yeah. you, you achieved so much mm. in your amateur career, you know, Olympic gold. Mm. The, what was the main difference, I guess, when you moved to Connecticut, everything changed with yeah. the pro game and the amateur game? I actually didn't realise how different the two sports actually were when I first turned pro. Um, I just thought boxing was boxing, and <laughs> but it really is just a completely different sport. You're, you're working on completely different things in the gym and it's obviously a lot more uh, rougher and you, you get away with, with a lot more in the pro game as well. And you're, you have to stand there and fight a bit more as well. It, you obviously can't move your legs as much in, the, in, a, in a, say, a 10 round fight or a 12 round fight for the men. So I definitely had to work on, uh, on a lot of different aspects of my game. 
Um, but it's a challenge that I've absolutely loved, even sparring some of the pro boxers that, that I have sparred in, in Connecticut. I've, I've learned so much over the last couple of years and I'm still definitely learning in my trade. I feel like I am getting better and better in each fight and um, I feel like it, you know the best is yet to come. We saw a video of you sparring Rigondo and, and <laughs> that is, that's Seriously, a Seriously, I couldn't a land a punch though, could I? <laughs> 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 I couldn't hit him with, with a bucket of water, he was, he was so elusive. He, yeah. He's an elusive, he's one of yeah. the, the greatest, he's yeah, yeah. very slick. How do you find, is it mainly you sparring guys or are you sparring other female boxers? How does it work? I mostly spar the guys, but there are a few females that have sparred over the years as well, obviously, who have been great for me as well. but. Um, it's just e a lot easier and I, I get a lot more challenged sometimes spar sparring the guys as well and I, I obviously there's obviously a lot more guys to, to spar uh, than women so um, but yeah I spar uh, some, some really great pros over the last couple of years since I have been in Connecticut and as I said the, the things that I've actually learned from them have been absolutely incredible. Do you think they're sometimes surprised when I mean I guess they come into the gym and they say yeah. right who are you sparring today? Can yeah. you tell, do you think they're like hang on a minute? It is definitely awkward the first spar. I mean, they don't, they don't really know what to expect, and um, it's always tough to get the initial spar with those guys. But once I get the spar with them, uh, the first spar, the next spar is always just a normal spar from there, from then on in. But um, they probably are a bit, a bit surprised, I think. And I've got, I've got a solid group of spars now in Connecticut where we're kind of traveling around the gyms, and um, you, you start to. to gain a bit more respect as well and um, you, you get a, a big relationship with these guys as well so it, it's, it's cool. What's next for you now? You've unified the division. Is it the, is, you know, a lot of people are saying the fight was very very close. Mm. Some people are saying you, you lost the fight. Yeah, yeah. You've had to deal with those, those criticisms. Mm. Is that a rematch you want or what's, what is next for you? The rematch is definitely going to happen at some stage. That's going to be in, inevitable. I, I think I'd love, to, I'd love to have that fight again. Uh, I'd love to be there a lot more convincingly than, than, than I did actually, um, but uh, we're on our own path as well and I, I think um, there's a lot of big fights out there for me, the, 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 the obvious one would be Amanda Serrano, that's, that's a huge fight, probably one of the biggest fights in women, women's boxing right now, uh, well one of the biggest fights in boxing period, I, even in, in women's boxing, that's a fight that people have, have talked about for, for a few years now. Um, and obviously the rematch with Delphi and Pursuit is going to be on the cards eventually as well. There's also Cecilia Bracas who, who's agreeing to, to go down to kind of light welterweight. That yeah. that would be huge. I mean, undisputed champion against undisputed champion. That's a history-making fight yeah. right there. So there's definitely big, big fights out there for me. But um, I'm not sure who's next or what's next right now. But I, I'm definitely enjoying this victory, and uh, I leave that to kind of Eddie here and I'm on my uh, manager Brian Peters. Eddie spoken about it. How how difficult would it be for you to change weights and to mm -hmm. go up or down? I definitely couldn't go down, but um, yeah. I I would definitely go to the light welterweight. That's for sure. I I walk around maybe at 142 pounds. I, I don't really have much to lose for uh, for the the lightweight limit, but um, no, it would be no problem for me to move up in weight. And um, I've beaten a lot of the champions in the light welterweight division, likes of Jessica McCaskill, Sanchez, Bustos. Um, I've 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 beaten all those girls, and it would be great to. to uh, to move up eventually and, and to have big, big mega fights with those girls as well. I guess that's one of the benefits of having a long amateur career is you, you've yeah. faced every style, you've almost faced you know, the, the top level opponents mm. in a lot of the divisions right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you really um, can't put a price on experience really. I've definitely uh, seen every style, like I said. I've been boxing uh, since I was 10 years of age, boxing uh, all over the world um, at, at big international competitions since I was 17 or, eight, or 18 years of age. So I definitely have that experience and that's one of the reasons why I was able to fast track to, to become an undisputed champion as well. You mentioned there's three potential big fights. Mm. What happens after those fights? There's always girls coming up, isn't it? There's always <laughs> big, big fights. Um, I don't see myself retiring any, any, any time soon. I think I have plenty of years left in me. Um, I know my family aren't going to be happy to hear that, <laughs> but um, they're, they're having a nervous breakdown, I think, in the last fight. Um, but I definitely have plenty of years left in me. There's always big fights out there, like I said, and there's always uh, great girls coming up. So um, what, a, what a great position to be in, though, um, as an undisputed champion. and. Uh, plenty of years after me.
I'm calling the shots now. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I, I usually just do what I'm told, really. <laughs> I think Eddie Hearn's calling the shots, and I just agree with, with everything he says. <laughs> with that, you grew up in a big family. Mm. You had a lot of brothers and sisters. Yeah. Is that not something that you kind of look at as go, right, you know what? A lot of people say, oh, yeah, I, I, my dad was a boxer. Yeah, yeah. I'm a boxer. My brother's a boxer. Yeah. Would you not think, okay, if I, if I had kids, if that's what you're looking to do, yeah. is that something that's on the radar? Yeah, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'm not even too sure about the kids, but I can hardly look after myself. But <laughs> um, I'd definitely be open-minded to like some marriage and stuff like that. I, I have to find a husband first, that's it's the only thing. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. a good start. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I definitely will be open-minded to that. And, that. and if that does happen, I guess I can, I can you know, your life is, is definitely going to change. But. Right now, my focus is definitely on boxing, and um, I, I'm very, definitely very much focused on, on the job at hand, but we'll see what happens, I guess. Do you think the boxing, you're so focused on the boxing, you're not necessarily looking elsewhere, you don't have time to look elsewhere? Yeah, that's definitely been a big part of it. There's definitely been a lot of sacrifices that I, that I hit, that I did have to make to get to this point, but I know in order to be great, you have to make great sacrifices as well. and. Um, and I'm living the life of my dreams right now. This is what I dreamed of, you know, boxing and, and big stadiums, boxing in front of thousands of people, and um, boxing for these world titles. And this is this is everything I I, I, I ever wanted really, and, and something that, that I dreamed of my whole life. So, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely very blessed. I mean, it sounds like a movie, and it's been made into a movie, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's I heard that you haven't actually watched. That's right. The film yeah. based on your life. Yeah, I have it's watched it, but um, I know the story of my own life, so I don't I'm feel like I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I need to watch it. But yeah. um, my family have all, have all watched it, obviously, and they're, they're all very proud. And that, that to me is is all that matters. Did you ever dream that you'd be unified, undisputed, unified world champion? Plus, there'd be films made about your life. No, You'd be definitely. training in America, <laughs> fighting at MSG. No, it's definitely been a very, very exciting journey, but it's definitely surpassed all my expectations. That's for sure. Um, you now, my first dream was to, to, was to win an Olympic gold medal, and I did that. And then uh, when I turned pro um, a couple of years ago, my dream was to become the Olympic champion. But it's definitely been more exciting than, than I ever could have, could have dreamt of. And um, I've got a, a fantastic team of people around me and I definitely wouldn't be where I am without those people as well. My coach Ross, who's, who's went above and beyond for me in, in Connecticut, my manager Brian Peters and, and Tomas, they've worked wonders for me as well um, in this and obviously uh, my family as well at home who, who, are, who are, are always behind me. It's not always been the, I guess, the, the most normal path to uh, I guess being a world champion, the, people, people don't know that you got 11, 11 caps, football caps for your, yeah, your, 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 your I, Ireland. Oh, I thought I had more than that, did I? Is it not? <laughs> no, I, 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 was told, I was told 11. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, um, I stopped playing football actually at around maybe 22 or 23, but um, football was obviously a huge part of my life as well. Um, uh, I am a Legion Ida fan though, so don't don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it's, I, I don't need to judge you, it's been dark times. Yeah. It's been very dark <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But no, it was a big part of my life and I, I loved I loved the football as well. How did that come about? Were you, were you, I mean, how, how do you box at that level and play football at that level? Yeah, it was very, very difficult at the end. I mean, I wasn't really playing any club football at the time. I was just going away for the international matches. I wasn't playing regularly as w at all, actually, um, near the end. So uh, in, in the end, it was a very easy decision. I had to just uh, drop the football and, and just focus on the box. And I, um, I was trying to compete against these girls who were playing football every single week. And yeah. I, I wasn't, I definitely wasn't the same player as, as I was when, when I was playing uh, regular club football. So I, I knew I had to just, um, step away from the sport and focus on my boxing. <laughs> so I, I would recommend that as, as like a, a good hobby is, is obviously going to watch football, going yeah, to watch it, but yeah. it leads it just causes you yeah, too much stress. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It causes you far too much stress. You don't need that, <laughs> that negativity <laughs> in your life. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll stay well away from Ellen Road. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you have huge support at home. Yeah. I think you, you came home and I don't know how many thousands of fans came out in the pouring rain, it was yeah. grey, it was cold, yeah. all to support you, all to see you hold up all of the belts. Yeah, it's like, How does that feel? It's incredible, really. The support that I get from home is, is absolutely, uh, you know, it's second to none, really. And 
even in the, in the down times when I was going through such a disappointing year, when I came back from the Rio Olympics um, without a medal, that they were still there backing me and supporting me. And, and that to me just meant everything. So I am so grateful for for the support I've gotten from home. It makes it all wor worthwhile really when you're seeing the, the crowds of people and the sacrifice that you're making, the hard work that you're, that, that you're putting in and you come home to tell the people and that it definitely makes it wor worthwhile. Could you see yourself boxing a huge fight in Ireland? Well, that would be the dream, wouldn't it? I, I'd love that. Um, a big homecoming fight in Dublin it would be absolutely incredible. And I think it is going to be on the cards eventually. But right now, the, the um, all the fights seem to be in America and or, or the UK, I, I guess. So, um, but I'd love to fight at home. Uh, the, the atmosphere I know will be absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, that that would be a dream. Go get in Eddie's ear. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I hope he's watching this, actually. <laughs> I'm sure he will yeah. be. So you reached out to your current coach yeah. after the Olympics. Mm -hmm. How did you, did you know about him before? Yeah. Were you kind of aware of him? Did you see anyone did you know that was trained? But I actually uh, had a, a lot of his books at home um, and uh, I knew of him obviously from over the years. So I, I, I just, I reached out to him uh, over Twitter, actually just a Twitter message asking could I come over for, for a few weeks for a training camp that I had such a disappointing year and um, the minute I went over to him I knew that this was the coach that, that was going to take me to the next level really and um, the, his coaching methods are, are, are like nothing I, I've seen before. He's definitely um, one of the best coaches in the world I think in my opinion and um, he tackled me. He's absolutely brilliant as well in the corner. I had to start listening to him a bit more yeah, in the corner. Say, yeah, he's ignoring <laughs> well, yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he is absolutely brilliant. And um, as I said, he just goes above and beyond for me. He's, I, I don't think there's a, any other coach who cares for, the fire, for their fighters as much as he does. And um, I'm very, very grateful for that. What clicked initially? Because you spend so much time mm -hmm. together. You know, you, you you're in such stressful, high yeah. intensity situations together. What clicked when you when you first met? I think um, we just had the same philosophy about training. He's not he's not into this fancy kind of methods. He's he's pretty much old school, and that definitely works for me. It's all about the sparring, all about the road work, just all about hard work. Um, he's not into like social media or anything like that. He's just uh, just wants to train, wants to put the work in, and I love that about him. And um, yeah, we just had, we pretty much had all the, this, the same philosophy about that. And um, when I first went over to him for the first few weeks, I, I was, I started, as I said, just I started to enjoy my boxing again. And I just loved, I loved the atmosphere, I loved the environment that I was in. And um, I started to box better than, than I, I ever boxed before, really, when I was on his coaching method. So um, I feel like I am improving from, from fight to fight, as I said, pure. You spoke about three big fights. Mm. There's no plans to retire anytime soon. Yeah. But looking into the far future, yeah. is there anything that you wanted to do that you wanted to do as a kid or you, you haven't had the chance to do through boxing? Any plans? As I said before, I, I live a very, very simple life. So when I do retire from the sport, um, I'd actually love to stay involved in boxing in some way, shape or form, or form even as a coach, maybe someday. Or, I'd love to, to start my own boxing club even in, in Ireland somewhere and um, I, I, as I said I, I just want to stay involved in the sport. I can't imagine life without boxing so yeah. um, or else I could just get married and have loads of kids and who knows what could happen. Loads of kids, yeah. <laughs> they get a football team. Yeah, right? <laughs> so yeah, who knows. Yeah, I think the Katie Taylor all women's boxing academy. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great actually. You yeah. know what, maybe we'll go into business together. I think yeah, I, I got to shake your hand on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about you signed up yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. I'll be moving to Bray in, like, in a week. <laughs> Katie, thank you very much thank you. for coming down to Born Fighter. Oh, it's been great. I thank feel you. like I've learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. And now I've also signed myself up. Yeah, exactly. A, uh, boxing academy in Ireland. <laughs> You've seen it here. We shook hands on it. So. <laughs> it's been a productive, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A productive interview. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thank you